three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome into the open where we get technical. You should have investments in long-term growth. Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm Neil Hamilton. This is Get Technical. Let's get something out of the way. Sir Dirty, what is with the just got out of bed, good use of hyphenation, hipster hairdo? I just got out of bed and I'm a hipster. What can I say? Sheesh. How's everyone doing? How is everyone doing? We have, let, let me, let me, let me, let me show you something. I'm going to show you something cool. Watch this. Hold on. Share my screen. Hey, Ramon. Uh, 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 the screen. That's Cliff. Let's look at QQQ. Market opens in five minutes. QQQ, NASDAQ, ETF, up in the pre-market. Mm, and it feels good. Mm. Let me get an amen. If you watch this dip and you said, I'm going to scoop up some of that as soon as I see some signs of life. Let me get an amen in the chat. If you're happy to see that QQQ has returned to a bona fide textbook definition upward trend, which it has not been for the past few weeks, despite what SPY has been doing, don't press Alt F4. Don't. Who? <laughs> don't, don't fall for that. Let's go. Can you point out on the charts why we should always sell the rip? Um, hmm, that's that's kind of a loaded question, but I'll I I will I'll I'll take the bait. I'll try. Um, why you should always sell the rip? Usually, when there's a huge move upward, like I, like most of the time, when there's a huge move upward um, on something like QQQ here, you can see a couple gaps upward, um, and we're about to open um, with an, uh, another gap another gap up, um, you look for signs of overextension. Um, so you can use your RSI. And if the line is above 70, getting into the 80 range, you're looking at overbought mode. And that means that people are probably going to start selling off. And so you want to make sure that you sell before that so you can take your profit. Um, Alt F4, who can bid the highest? Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> Guys, are you, are you debating, Jason? Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Um, all right. That's for, for for my April Fool's prank. Yeah, so my guys, those of you that fell for the April Fool's prank where I said I was leaving Benzinga and I was going to stop doing Get Tactical. Gotcha. That's all I have to say about that. Um, QQQ, um, here's the way I'm looking at it. This is the way I'm looking at NASDAQ right now. We are in a confirmed upward trend. Higher high, higher low. But we have this previous trend line, right? Very broad going all the way back to our COVID lows. This is our trend line that we draw on the right side of our candlesticks always to begin with, um, showing the support that we dip back down to as we loftily rise to glory. QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF. Then we violated it and broke down during our little tech sell-off rotation into value. We attempted to get back in there, but got beat back down. Back in March, mid-March, we are attempting it again, and it looks like we're right on it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see it a little bit, so don't complain at me. Put your little CVS bifocals on. We are touching that line. We're doing that, that thing. We're doing the flyby. Flyby kiss. Kissing the line. Um so, so really, really bullish indicator that's going to be very exciting that we want to see is a close above this line, a close above this line. So then we can start playing it like this. That's what we want to see with QQQ. Um, what do you think about start buying SQQ? Uh, so 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 that that depends. What I would say is if we get rejected by this line, 
you're going to, you have two support lines that you're going to watch out for. So you're saying SQQ because it's an inverse ETF, meaning QQQ goes up, SQQ goes, Q goes down. That's a, a way, an easy way for traders to short the NASDAQ. You may do so with a reasonable amount of this isn't a dumb idea. If we get rejected at this line today with a close, a session close below it, but you've got to watch out for these support lines. We've got support at 329. So with SQ, SQQQ, you want to be watching for the commensurate price level, right? Here we're going down with SQQQ, we'd be going up. So you're watching for that level. Um, so what I can do right now, I, I wanted to just quickly touch on SPY, but I mean, SPY is just going crazy. SPY is about to, I believe, get a little bit of exhaustion um, uh, and consolidate a little bit because you can see that if we look at the history of SPY's uh, cycles here between impulse and correction, impulse and correction, it doesn't really get that oversold or overbought before it corrects. Um, and it's it's looking like it's time for a little bit of a correction. Market open. Aaron Bree. Producer AB. Producer AB, what do you have to say for yourself? Are you there? He's hiding in his box. Um, yeah, so we're, we're opening down or not, we're not opening down, but we're starting to move down a little bit on spy. So I do expect a little bit of, uh, uh, consolidation at this level. Um, this is actually a Fibonacci line where I, here, I can do this. Let's look at our last, uh, corrective phase for spy and just use the Fibonacci retracement tool, anchor it at the top of that corrective phase, and then anchor it once again with the second point on the low of that corrective phase. And you can't see it, but the line is right where I put my white line here, where we hit resistance. And it I would expect something kind of like, maybe like that, because that's the way SPY looks. So let's draw a trend line on SPY. Let's do, our do, let's do the work that needs to be done here. Where I take my trend line that has two points where I go to a swing low on support to the next swing low on support and say, we want to hold that, right? That's what we're looking to hold as we continue our upward trend with SPY. Um, so you can look at a touch on this trend line as a buy signal, as long as it looks like it's bouncing. So you want confirmation of bounce, right? Um, so let's look at SQQ. So you want to short the Qs. All good. Episode is completely mistitled because I wanted to talk with cup, talk about cup with handles, which we'll do. Mm, tough to say. I would only do this in a day trading scenario. Just looking at like at the daily chart. Not looking good for SQQ right now. Up to you, my friend. I would be looking for some identifiable pattern, but this right here. Boop. Looks like this thing's going to go lower on bullish cues. That was the reverse ETF. This thing just looks too damn good. Looks too damn good, guys. Um, what do I think about the slow stochastics indicator? Um, I, I want to start exploring. Uh, actually, guys, follow me on Twitter. Follow me at Neil's Tweets and tweet at me the stuff you want me to start using. Because this show is about learning together. Did I, put, did I type that right? Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, and let me know what what tools. Another one that I want to use is the relative strength line, uh, which tells you how the stock you're looking at is comparing to the spy, uh, which is totally matches what I do because I'm always looking for uh, uh, stocks that have sector strength or relative strength against the rest of the market. Um, actually, that's not even unique to me. Everyone should be doing that. Um, okay, so I wanted to look at a few cup and handles. Let me get my notes open here. In the meantime, if you guys have some cup with handles that you know of, some tickers that you like, drop them in the chat. I'm looking for cup with handles today, okay? Because they're extremely common and they occur after sell-off phases like we've just had. So if you've got some charts that look like this with one of these, it looks like setup territory for a cup with handle. Um, so drop your names, which is, I mean, look at QQQ. Am I right? What do you think is going to happen here?
Hey. Okay, let's get a couple hit a couple of these. So, uh, regional banks. Regional banks. Let me get my sector ETFs open really quick. SBDR regional banking ETF is KRE. Let's take a look at the KRE ETF, regional banking. Looks like we are still holding support on this one. So you can see we've been here before. I've got my little drawings showing our impulsive and corrective phases. Looking for a bounce on regional banks today, but it is still holding support at this moment. So watch this closely. And the reason I'm pulling that up um, is because Central Pacific CPF Financial Corp is a cup with handle. How do we identify a cup with handle? Ideally, a strong upward trend because this is a continuation pattern, a rejection at a level with some selling off. And we don't want V-shaped, guys. We don't want V-shaped. No one wants to drink out of like a snow cone cup. You know those, you know those like uh those little cylinder cups that they 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 have at um those paper cups that they have at like water tanks or whatever you call them, water coolers. Those things suck. So they feel awkward in your hand. I feel like if I'm gonna squeeze it, it's gonna gonna pop out or just like crumple like a little little into dust. Those things suck. We don't want that. We don't want that little water cooler V, all right? We want a nice, a nice tea cup. All right. And then it, it's getting rejected again, once again. And then we get a little bit of a sideways sell-off, but it does not go down more than, say, 30% into our original cup. This is where we're looking for buying opportunities. This is the line in the sand. That's really small. Let me make it bigger. I'm sorry. Don't be mad. Can you see it now? That is my rudimentary drawn with colored pencil cup with handle. And drop, drop your cup with handles in chat. I want to give a big shout out to Jason for chilling and shilling here on Get Technical. Chilling and shilling. That's how we do it. So, guys, the first one to reach Spencer Israel by phone, if you can find it, his number's out there. It depends. If you're in Alabama, go to your nearest gas station bathroom stall. <laughs> and get his number. And the first one to call it will get a $20 Amazon gift card. Um, worth it. Worth it. We got some screaming deals on Amazon right now. Um, so thanks, Jason, for that. <laughs> I hope Spencer never sees that. Don't tell him I made that comment, please. Um, I need to maintain a healthy working relationship with him. <laughs> um, all right. Cup with handle. <laughs> all right. So here we have it, folks. Let me get my handy dandy paintbrush and draw my my happy little cup with <laughs> with handle. Um, upward trend. We got it. Hit by some resistance. We're not going to cry about it. Why? Because we're watching for that little scoop action, little round and scoop action. Not a sharp super V, but a little scoopy. Like like the prices gradually get down to their low, which is right about here. All right, and then we've got our sell off. I'm using pens, guys. I got my crayons out. That's, that's you know, we're keeping it casual. But you know what? For the sake of posterity, I'm going to start using now um, some more definite lines to make this easier to read for you. For all you guys with your CVS bifocals. So let me erase my drawings. Let's do it right with the arc tool. This point, the highest point on your trend up when the, when the, uh, uh, the down, when it got, when the stock got rejected at that price level and started to sell off, is called your left cup. Now, after finding the left cup, the next thing you want to find is your pivot. Our pivot is the next high point, which can often be lower than your left cup. In this case, it's slightly lower. Not a lot. It's almost exactly at the same level as the left cup, which makes this even cleaner of a trade. So perfect for what we're doing right now. Oh, shit. Jason's in the student walk. Would I wait for the green candle to get in? Gregory, great question. And I'm about to answer that. Um, Jason, I think, is eating a 
uh, Ego Waffle and close to his microphone. Me? Can you hear me? Yes. You can You can actually hear me? No. Yes I changed no? my mind. Nope, I can't hear you. You can hear me. Okay, can the, can the audience hear me? If I can hear you, they probably can too, yeah. All right, Neil, I'm sorry to invade your show for just 30 seconds, okay? Do it. Just to, I heard you. Your show is great. I, I Thanks for the advice on finding his phone number in those bathrooms. That was great. Um, uh, and Spencer's. But you know what I decided? This what? Is, we're, we're Zinger Nation. All of us here, 500 people, we're all a team. You guys love Neil, and you guys give him ideas to talk about, and we're all a team. And they, two guys in the chat asked, are we on Fubo TV? Well, we had the CEO on six weeks ago. He's like, "Yeah, let's get a syndication deal." Send him some. We sent him some swag. No follow up, you know. And that's upsetting. So instead of just doing it internally with Benzinga team members, I'm changing the game, and I'm changing it today, Neil. Zinger Nation is going to be Zinger Nation. We're going to get stuff done together. So yeah, I gave Spencer's number out, and Clyde got a hold of Spencer. It sounds like maybe you want Clyde to call in. He said that Spencer was not too happy to hear from Clyde. But listen, Clyde the Glide is going to help us get on Fubo, Fubo TV to stay on Spencer. Clyde, call Spencer every day until we're on Fubo. That's totally good, man. Me, me and Neil need it because, listen, Neil's, yeah. working, uh, Neil's working 100 hours a week. I'm sure I'll get a text message yelling at me right now. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? And maybe I'll get a bad review. Someone will write on Yelp that Jason Raznick sucks. But you know what? <laughs> Every bad review I get and my kids have to see, which is terrible. At the end of the day, Neil, <laughs> we're helping our users. We're helping people get better information. Your technical Amen, brother. show, it's French technicals was French to me. So it's not Jason versus a team member versus Spencer. It's us all together get the distribution so they can watch the show how they want, when they want, and learn from the best instead of having to turn on CNB fucking C. That's what I have to say. So Zinger Nation is starting today. And Neil, I have a new show, The Business of Ben Zinger. It's going to be a weekly show. I don't know the day of it yet. I got to talk to Internet Enforcers, my consultant. We're new friends, and that's what's going to happen. I'll leave you alone now. I just had to say that. Keep doing your thing, Neil. Sorry. Peace. All right, baby. So, guys, yeah. So so it's going to be a buy signal if you see any news uh, related to Fubo plus Benzinga. Buy signal. Jason, you're not an idiot. You're passionate. We've already established. That's what passion does sometimes. Sometimes it makes a man do irrational things. Um, at any rate, just getting back to the cup with handles. Someone asked me. I want to get back to what someone asked me. They said, um, will you buy on a green candle above the handle? Yes, I will buy on a green handle above the candle. It's green eggs and ham. Uh, so right now, not looking good. Uh, but this could still, I mean, if we get a, another session right here, this is, I mean, this is still within handle zone. Um, it just hasn't broken out yet, right? Like a pattern is not confirmed. This is one thing that I think a lot of folks uh, uh, kind of get wrong is that this is not a cup with handle pattern. It is not a cup with handle pattern until we actually get a break above. Then it is confirmed that this matters. Um, all right, so yes, with a with a break above our our sloping line of resistance on our handle here, I want to see a session close candle above this line. If I see that, what I will do is target the next line of resistance, which is twenty seven, in a leveraged manner. So there's a couple ways you can do this. If you have a really big trading account, you can take a big position. Or you can take you can buy options with a swing trade like this. I would do something like 60 to 90 days out, or you can day trade it in between. But the way this looks with the cup and handle, let me get my little profit loss thing here. I think this is it. Yeah, is you're entering at close above the sloping resistance and you're setting your stop at the lowest level of support on your handle, which is the bottom of this wick, and then you're targeting this resistance line an aggressive trade this is very aggressive so you're watching this the way i don't i don't typically do that the way that i want to trade a cup and handle is a break above the the right cup and then even more conservatively or the right pivot above the left cup which is this resistance line so then our profit loss our entry our stop and our target looks like 
this about a nickel above resistance. I'm setting my stop at the breakout, wherever it broke broke out at, and then I'm targeting the depth of my cup up to my my neckline here, my resistance. Let me get rid of the chilling and chilling hashtag, and I'm targeting that depth. So then you get a much more attractive risk reward ratio. Then you have more time. It's a longer trade. It's more of a swing or positional trade. Um, so this is something where you can expect upward, a little consolidation and some activity before you eventually get to your price target. But you are looking for full resolution and monitoring it on a, a less frequent basis. Um, internet enforcers. Uh, I, I've considered it, but I don't feel I, I don't give me a one in chat if you guys want me to do educational videos. Um, give me a two in chat if you think that I'm I'm not not ready for that because that's what I feel like. I'm still learning. <laughs> Jason with the Jason Jason is the living embodiment. Guys, here's here's some love for Jason Rasnick. He is the living embodiment of the the Nike uh, uh, slogan. Jason is the Nike Nike slogan. Jason goes to the church of Nike or the temple, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's more of an analogy. Let's not get caught up in identity politics. Um, okay, so that's your cup with handle with some squiggle squagglies on it. Cup with handle CPF. CPF should be on the watch list, guys. So this is one of those ones where you're going to check back in periodically. And baby, once it breaks out above this, the great thing about it is if you want to day trade it too, if you want to do some options day trading, you can do that on the way up. You can milk this thing all the way up to your, your uh, sell target. Um, you yeah, got shine the child above. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're kind of making a fake religion here, but yeah, I, I don't... Shia LaBeouf. I don't like that guy. Um, yada, yada, yada. All right. Yeah. Throw your tickers at him. Just scream them at me. I want you guys frothing in the mouths like like psychotic zombies. Screaming your tickers at me in all caps. But please, while you're doing that, give me a time frame to look at. Twitch. Twitch is here, guys. Say Everyone say hi, Twitch. Hi, Twitch. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, Austin, you kind of nailed it. Um, guys, ticker and timeline. Ticker and timeline. Austin, what was your ticker? So you're, I love how you're screaming it. That way I can actually hear you. That way I notice... I, it's easier for me to notice your comment among the stream of other comments if you all caps it. Okay, so the first one I see that's actually got a ticker and a time frame in it is from Kurt. We got the XEL. Which X is that metal or perhaps energy? too good um whoo baby baby what <laughs> god god if the if dmca wasn't so hard on me lately i'd play a certain song right now because we've got a bona fide well more or less it is time to feast on this no i didn't want that i wanted the week let's look at this on a weekly basis zoom out do a little multi-time frame analysis on this thing let's take a look at this strong trend that we had here Let's get our trend line tool out. Let's do it right. Boop. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. So these two swing lows lining up with this swing low. And then when we got really rejected, look how sharply we went down after we lost this support line. So there you go. That's a, a great indication of the importance of uh, trend lines and how they are the manifestation of the memory that price has on your charts. Um, all right. So look at this. Look at this. From a pure trend perspective, what's happening with, with XEL right now, guys? Let me know in chat if you, if you can see sort of what's happening. Because there is a battle here. There's some tension. There's some drama. All right. We're watching it unfold. We're like... I was about to do a dumb analogy, but I won't. Um, right here. We're at the border right now. We just handed the Canadian uh, Mounties 
our little uh, U.S. passport, and they're looking at it real scrutinously. They're like, sir, do you have any cigars or sausages in your trunk? And you start sweating. Because you do. That's kind of where we are with X XEL. We want to break above this line and then show that we are back on trend. And then we're in bull trend city. We're in a bullish regime. We have exited our bearish regime. So that's the number one thing you want to do with that. Um, from a pattern perspective, tough to say from a pattern perspective. This does not look like it's forming any meaningful breakout pattern. This just looks like some normal price action um, that is trying to get back on trend. So my take on XEL is you want a solid close. I'm, I'm going to sound repetitive and that's okay because that's that's trading. Repeating the same thing over and over as long as it works. Once you find what works, repeat it over and over. Don't try to get cute. There should be an element of of uh, the mundane uh, to trade in because we're here to make money, not do fancy, cute stuff. We want a candle close above the sloping line of resistance and turn it into support. And then I'm looking at that as a buy signal. And then we're going to look for something lofty like this. So let's do some additional analysis on this. We're on the we're on the weekly. So let's, let's switch over to the daily. All right. The whole time that was weekly. Looks like today might not be the day. However, this is a very neutral candle. This is a very neutral candle, but you can see how it's just been for the past four days, including today, um, been respecting this line as resistance. We want to return to that trend, guys. Um, and again, so so just if you want to draw the trend line on your chart, that was the low on June 11, 18, and then the low on Jan 4, 19. This is a long-term trend that we're trying to break back into. Um. Let's pull out our, our Bollinger Band and see if we've got some gas in the tank. So great sign here on the Bollinger Band is this mean curl on the red. Mean curl. This would have been back here a buy signal. Many traders will use this as a buy signal, um, purely indicating a reversal in trend on the Bollinger Band. That's the 20-day moving average on a daily chart. Um, but now, look at this. We're in overbought territory, so we're watching it. And the MACD is also in overbought territory. It's way up there. So that's the RSI and the MACD are both way up there. So it's looking like people might be taking some profits at this level, and we might get a little bit of a, a corrective phase here. Uh, no surprise that I don't see a very clear breakout pattern. A lot of times, if you're going to break into something... The, it, You'll see a sort of a pattern to confirm it. Um, G Gro GoPro, let's do it. What are you, Ricky Gutierrez? He loves that stock. Ricky Gutierrez trades like three stocks over and over every single morning. Is done by like 10 a.m. It's insane. Like if you ask him, like, oh, which stocks are you looking at? And he says GoPro like every time. And then back to what we were saying earlier about QQQ, he also flippy flops between the Qs and the, the inverse Q, so the SQQQ. He'll do that all the time. If the Q's not doing what he wants it to do from a, a, a bullish perspective, he'll just switch to SQQ. Trade that, get done. Then he goes to a class at high school and drives a Lamborghini home. Um. Okay, yeah, so we're looking at GoPro. Uh. I mean, very quick analysis is just Bollinger Band is we had a big expansion here on our Bollinger Band for this big explosive move that included um, that gap, though. A lovely, a lovely gap. Um, so big explosive move is going to be is going to cause our Bollinger Band to expand. And the Bollinger Bands are going through cycles of expansion and contraction. So now we're entering that contraction phase, which is perfectly fine. Now we're touching this 20-day moving average line. If it, if we're respecting this mean, this middle point in our bands, you can target something modest. Just using Bollinger Bands, something modest. A modest swing up to the upper line on the Bollinger Band. 
and then perhaps expect another cycle of expansion in the Bollinger Band. In which case, if I if I redraw this, you're looking for your Ripster floating on cloud scenario, where you've got your um, price doing this, and then you've got your um, 20 day moving average doing this. That's one way to look at GoPro purely from a trend analysis, just using something very organic, the Bollinger Band. Let's remove that and just only look at price. Only looking at price here. You can see we had a short little rounding bottom here. Very short following this gap down. That we exploded out of. And see if this lines up. So the depth of this rounding bottom, the low point up to our neckline, then added to our neckline, lines up perfectly with the body, the closing of this session. So you can see that resolution of this pattern here. So that's just the, the power of patterns for you. Um, hard to see the mouse movements. Yeah, I'll call out stuff. Um, okay. Guys, time to get get uh, uh, foaming in the mouth. Start screaming your tickers at me like maniacs. But give me a time frame. Uh, VISL on the five-minute chart. This link. Nice. On the what chart? Five-minute. Okay, let's do it. So in the five minute, I'm going to pull up two moving averages. I'm going to pull up the um, eight exponential moving average and the 21 exponential moving average. So this is where I... Uh, very simply would just use these moving averages. This is com comes from Brad Weber. He has done a lot of back testing and he really likes the 8 and 21 exponential moving averages as buy and sell signals on the the 10 minute chart but he's done it on the 5 um in a lot of cases when i'm trading the 10 minute chart i flip back and forth between 5 and 1 minute and and so forth to get an idea of when i'm going to get whips odd um but at any rate you had a buy signal here so the red line is our fast line the blue line is our slow line. 8 EMA, 20 EMA. Buy signal after market close yesterday. We are still in hold territory for that initial trade. RSI looking good. MACD flashed a buy signal this morning. At 9.35, so right after the open, the MACD fast line crossed the slow line flashing a buy signal. Um, so what I have to say about this is entry was a bit earlier. Entry could have been right here. Buying at the low of this wick would have been sick. And that would have been a percentage up of 6%. Absolutely beastly for an options in the money call option expiring this Friday. Let's go. Um, I don't know what the, oh, God dang, this thing is awesome. I don't know what the options volume is like for this stock, but in principle, that is the way I would trade on the five minute. But if you just bought common on a 6% move, buy yourself, get yourself a McDonald's McGriddle. Get the good new one. I think they have a McGriddle with fried chicken patties on it. Like, look at this thing go. If you are in VISL on the five minute and you use the buy signal, like the the uh, eight, eight uh, increment EMA crossing the 21 EMA, or you entered a bit later with the fast line on the MACD crossing the slow line, whoo wee. Get the get two of those damn McGriddles. 
spoil yourself and then this weekend just work out or like take a walk whatever um okay so visl so all, i i think if you're in this if you're in visl and you wanted me to just confirm that you're you're a sick trader you got it well done all right, everyone hit the like button because we have to hit it again because Jason restarted the stream. Everyone, please hit the like button. It seriously helps us with the algorithm, especially now that our shows are separated. Smash that like button for this great chat pick, V-I-S-L. And every time I look at this thing, this candle is screaming. You know you want it, Neil. You know you want that chicken McGriddle. And I, I do. I do want it really bad. But you know what? It's summertime, and it's time to start doing some crunches and some push-ups. I gotta, I gotta, I'm pushing my muffin top down into my waistband. It's time to get out there. And this buy signal already flashed. So guess what? I'm not chasing. I'm not chasing. But good work on VISL. All right, next ticker, please. CTRM on the four hour. Thank you, Alfredo. Ooh, shipping? Um, reverse scenario. So the great thing about option, day trading options, is that when you're using the 8 and 21 and you see the fast line cross down through the, the slow line, that's your signal to go short or sell. So in the money puts expiring this Friday, let's go. Just make sure that you sell to close before the close. That's it. We're not holding these options contracts for more than a day. Shout out Brad Weber. I will forever give credit to Brad, Brad, Weber, Brad Weber for doing putting the work in to find this um, indicator and then gifting it to me like a mythical sword. Like he's Merlin. I'm little King Arthur. Um, and I have used this and it has worked for me. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect indicator. You've got to you've got to keep your wits about you, and you have to know your other indicators to confirm. You got to look for uh, confluence. Um, confluence also is occurring here with MACD is flashing a sell signal right here. All right, but then you've also got to be looking at support and resistance lines. Very very important. That's why we don't just look at the five minute chart, which I'm doing now. But he wanted to see that in the four hours. So actually, I'm I'm doing you guys doing you guys wrong. So let's start with the the weekly. Let's zoom out. Let's get do a little multi time frame analysis here to get a, a lay of the. Oh, okay, I see what's happening here. Um, okay, so we got Castor Maritime C T R M. Is that right? Is that the right ticker? Stupid paintbrush. Okay, Castor Maritime. Oof, looks a little messy. This is looks just looking at the weekly chart. This looks like it's a no touch zone for me. But, but are you looking for the bounce? Is that why you want me to look at this? We've got this rounding bottom where we gap down, and I'm drawing my line here. You can see that is exactly at previous support. Can y'all see that? Previous support was support before this gap, another gap down. This thing is sinking. Pun intended, shipping stocks. Um, I'm not touching this thing. We have we know this line is important because we got a gap down here at this level. We got resistance here at this level. It broke out as soon as it crossed this level on the rounding bottom. This was the start. This was the swing high for the left side of our rounding bottom. And it was previous support back in March 20th, 23rd, 2020. Now we're below. It looks like we're sinking. This is no touch territory for me. And plus the stock is like 46 cents. Um, uh, AUT, AUTL daily. Let's go. Well, okay. I'll revisit NMM if you tell me a timeline. I have to reinforce these rules. AUTL daily. So therapeutics, we got biotech. Yep. Um, day charts. You see that keyboard shortcut? Yeah. It's 
So we're starting off with the big picture, as we always should, especially when you're getting into a stock that you're not familiar with, you must familiarize yourself with it. It's behavior and it's important support and resistance levels. So let's go to the ab absolute swing high. I'm going to use my Fibonacci retracement tool at the swing high here. Down to the swing low. I'm just thinking about that cup and handle video that I was hoping to export and how bad it's going to suck. <laughs> I think we're going to have to try again or re-record that. Um, cool thing, Fibonacci retracement. We like it. We don't, it's not, we're not going to burn incense and start turning over tarot cards, all right? But it's a tool and it helps and it works just by anchoring at the, the, the high, the all time high for the stock. And then, uh, uh, the second anchor at the current support level, which I'll go ahead and draw here. Which I'll, I'll bring, I'll, I'll pull this down a bit lower actually. Yeah, it's actually perfect. Um, check it out. We can see one of our lines is lining right up with this control point here, this resistance level. Another one of our lines is right at this this uh, point of support. Bing, bing. You guys should see that. And then also the meat of the trading, another line right here at our resist resistance level. So good Fibonacci. We've confirmed that this thing is obeying Fibonacci levels so that we can use them as a guide. We're in a downward trend. We need a reversal pattern to go long. Is your thesis to go short on this or is your thesis to go long? Whoever gave me this, go ahead and drop that in chat. This is A-U-T-L, Auto, Autolus, Autolus uh, Therapeutics. Benzinga does have an earnings calendar. There's a great calendar for earnings in Benzinga Pro, pro.benzinga.com. Get a free trial. Um, but we also have an earnings calendar on the website that we're working on making the best damn earnings calendar on the internet. Dare I say the world. Um, so looking at this thing on the daily, I don't see a strong reversal pattern. Um, so since we're at the bottom here, and if you wanted, if you have a bullish thesis, you'd want to see a head and shoulders bottom a rounding bottom or a diamond bottom. Those are your reversal patterns that you want to see to, to, to uh, set your, your entry levels and time it. But we just don't have it right now. All right. What ticker is next? Link. Uh, maybe producer AB can help out with that. Next ticker and time frame, IRM. You got it. Who's AB? Yes, sir. I hear you. What's going on? You hear me, you said? Yep. You, you said my name. What did you say I could help with? Can you drop a link to the earnings calendar page? Earnings calendar page, yep. Um, we're doing a lot of, it's kind of uh, somewhat under construction. We're doing a lot of work to make their, our earnings calendar the best one on the net. I just said the net. Oh my God. Getting old. Um, so some of it might be under construction, but if you are able to get to it, please give us feedback. Send it to powerhour at bensinga.com. Um, would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so I'm drawing it. Uh, some important lines here. The next thing I want to draw is just a, a little trend here. So let's 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 shortcut our trend on IRM Iron, Iron Mountain. Is this the data? Oh no, okay. Finance, real estate, okay. Um, not volume profile. I'm looking for my little shortcut linear regression. Woo! Look at this little short-term trend we're in. That tool that I use to automatically generate that is the linear regression tool. Is probably on every charting tool available. Nothing exotic. Just auto generates a trend line based on the moving average. So go back to your calculus class and you'll know what I mean. Um, so we're riding the median here. We're in a healthy upward trend. 
Uh, so what I would say about Iron Mountain um, is that there is no reason for a trend to end until it does. Um, I don't see any signs of a top out here. Um, so I think this is, depending on how you want to trade it, um, this is something you could go long on, like for a longer period. There's not much more to it. Um, we're in a really healthy area where we're just consistently um, uh, between like 60 and 70 on the RSI. Um, we are going down a little bit on the MACD. Not sure what that is about. Um, so you might wait. I mean, if you want it, if you want a better entry, you might wait for a return to uh, support and then target a return to mean or even a return to the, the upper uh, devi deviation there. Um, another thing we can do, whoops, is pull up our handy Bollinger Band. Whoops. And we can see with the Bollinger Band, which is much more organic because it's, tra it's tracing the 20 day moving average. We can see that we're loftily riding this mean, which is great. That's this is where you want to be for for longer term holdings. This is where like the arc, the arc ETFs were for like all of 2020, and they were just printing money. Not saying that's necessarily what's going to happen here. Um, we can see here we had a, a nice little double bottom reversal. Great entry point would have been. as soon as we crossed this sloping resistance line. And you can see that's exactly where it opened on the following session and shot up. I'll zoom in. Um, so this is just a, a good stock. I'm going to I'm gonna add this to... I'll use my Monday watch list to and just add IRM. Um, add a text note and just say... Is it going to let me or is it going to be dumb? Yeah, it's going to be dumb. Uh, whatever. Good stock. g Powell is killing the market? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's look at the cues. The market getting killed? Ramon is the best technical indicator. Let me get my dumb drawings out of here. I mean, the cues, this is going to happen. This is one of those eerie things where it seems like as soon as you hit a resistance level, some, there, a catalyst happens in the market to like confirm that you're going to get rejected. Very eerie how that stuff happens. Yeah, so this is QQQ. Just checking to see because chat says that, that JPOW is killing the market. We're just seeing how bad. Um, I do want to see support get held here. That would be great, JPOW. On the spy. That would be sick. Um, Palantir. Um, so here's what's happening with Palantir. We had the beginnings of a reversal where you could have reasonably, reasonably, <sighs> reasonably um, bought on the bounce here and then targeted the 50% way how do I say this? Like the halfway point in our double bottom kind of box that we've drawn around this. Um, so if I move this, you can see that we're getting sort of a double bottom, which we want to see for a reversal on Palantir. We're moving the Bollinger Band to get the noise out of the way. And the meat of our trade is the top of these candles. It's not this little ocean spray thing. Volume profile would confirm that. And then so we draw in a box around our, our double bottom and then halfway through very easy with this tool because you can see the nodes can be targeted at the, the bottom point. And you can also grab a line like I'll grab this one. Like this. For a sloping line of resistance that you want to break out of. So we've kind of got two rough areas here. Number one, we've got a horizontal line of resistance that we just got rejected at with Palantir, which all that did was continue this downward trend that we're in. 
And then now we've got the sloping line of resistance that we got to break through. So we got kind of two areas we want to break through. Not sure when it will happen, but when it happens, that's when you go long Palantir for a swing. If it crosses above these, we're targeting about 2680. If it crosses 2680, then we're targeting the depth of our, our little uh, double bottom here that I, I have highlighted in yellow. Added to the resistance line, which is 3287. Um, so a conservative trade on that would be waking, waiting for a breakout at the top there. About five cents above it. And then shooting for about 21% move, 22%. All right, guys. Um, Producer AB, can you come on? Come, come, come on here for a second. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, Producer AB, turn your turn your camera on. Oh, I'm here. Here I am. Um, how, how are you? A little tired this morning. Haven't you know had my coffee or anything yet? But you know, but you, you got to drink your coffee as soon as you get up. You know, you're lucky. You're in East. I'm a whole hour before you right now. So it's only not, you know, I've been up since, let's see, 630 my time, which is 730 your time. Well, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it, man. I know it's a struggle. Um, were we supposed to have a guest on Get Technical this morning? We were. I got a little distracted with the whole uh, stream ending, switching over, you know. So we got uh, Jesse Elite here, straight from Zinger Nation. Got a... Uh, zinger fan coming on the show today for just uh five minutes or so all right good stuff producer ab thank you man i like that sweater it looks great great on you you are an I, I got it from ross's dress for less for like 12 dollars. my man that's a screaming deal i'll take it <laughs> all right let's bring our guests on jesse how we doing oh we got you on mute jesse how am I doing now? Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. You sound a lot better. All right, good. So I uh, hope you guys are having a good trading day. I've been watching all morning, Neil. You're great. I'm uh, learning a lot from you as well because it helps me with the uh, the vernacular of things. I started trading without learning a lot of uh, technicals and just kind of just watched the chart, lost money, and learned how to make money off of losing money. So it's now it's nice to hear some people use a lot of the the big words you don't hear out there in the, in the uh, other chat rooms. So. Thanks for that, man. Um, so sorry about the, the confusion, first and foremost. We're very glad to have you here. Your background is incredible. Um, I, lo I love the monitor that you have in the background, and the colors are a feast for the eyes. Um, would you mind telling folks a little bit about yourself and what you can teach them, what they yeah. can learn from you? Yeah, I started um, a group of friends like and I got together trading a few years back and then, you know, we just basically just started sharing our ideas, what we've learned. We watched a lot of videos, started learning from each other and said, you know what, um, I could teach you what I know. You teach me what you know. And we just got we started doing live sessions, you know, weekly, Monday through Friday. We would do them at 730 at night, just get together and talk about what we see in the market and indicators. And then we found a lot of some really advanced traders that found us that were like, you know what, I can help you guys out. We can learn about some really good things. They started building a course for us and teaching me and teaching our whole group and really just all about options and then market structure, Elliot theory, or Elliot waves and uh, Wyckoff theories and stuff like that. I haven't even got all the way through everything, but that's what he's teaching a lot of people. And um, we're learning a lot from each other. So it's just, we're, I trade options professionally. That's what I don't, I don't have any other job besides trading options to pay the bills, but I like to scalp, make three to 4% instantly and kind of get out. We do it live in a trading session with friends and it's pretty fun. Cool. Well, would you mind sharing your screen and just giving us like a bite-sized uh, uh, glimpse of how you do it? Yeah. Um, so basically a lot of times with a, another friend of mine, John, he's a trader. We like to scalp spy, uh, just making quick moves and we look for instant. Uh, I'm on the one to five minute charts trading the 10 minute uh, time frame. So if I go to a, a 10 minute uh, or sorry, we'll go to the 15 minute on this one. And then, you know, if we're looking right here, we see that we have, we're catching some support. We're looking for another candle to open up and, and show that this 50% is going to be protected. So I'm looking at this, this previous red candle. If I get a 50% retracement on this green line and it rejects like this wick did, then I'm assuming that this next line is going to open up a little flat and then possibly we're going to look to go to the downside a little more. But if we test back, get some support right here, 
that I'm looking forward to actually break back and, and consume this previous candle on the next maybe two or three bars. So if I was looking to get in, I would wait for another confirmation on a smaller time frame for a quick play. Um, and you could get in like, you know, right here, if it's, if it's showing that it's breaking above here, you want to see another green candle break. You want this to break above, make a new high, and then maybe possibly come back and take back this previous move. And so and typically. What are those lines that you have? Um, on the board right now is the KC and the EMA. And they're basically, I don't know. I can't, I'm not the kind of guy that could say, you know what, I can give you everything about what this information yep. is showing me. I just watch the lines, see how they, they respect it. Mm -hmm. And to me, I don't have to know everything. I just want to know enough that will help me be profitable by putting a lot of indicators together. So I've been testing them. I like to use a back to the strategy tester down here and actually test these strategies to see if they're working. And sometimes for me, a benefit is actually finding strategies that don't work and, and following the strategies that are terrible that are on here, that if you could find that they, they have a really bad, every time the indicator goes off, that's wrong. So mm -hmm. I like to bet again, sometimes I say, you know, if there's a lot of people in, maybe I want to go uh, the other way because um, it's, it, it's, there's a lot of people catching on. They're all watching it and they're all doing it, especially on shorter time frames. You can see exactly. it in fruition. Yeah. Uh, so the so, the point illustrated there, I just want to just blow through it really quick, just reiterate because I'm I do that. Um, he's got the Keltner channel, um, which honestly neither one of us know how it's calculated, but we know it works. Um, so we're using that as an indicator along with the 50 EMA. He's on the five minute chart here, um, and something that he pointed out that I love um, that I hear actually from from short like like. Uh, options day traders um, is when there is a, a, a breakout pattern or some sort of indicator that a lot of people commonly use as a buy signal and it gets rejected and you know it's it just doesn't work out well you front run them and go the opposite direction yeah it goes uh, and puts right there and in the money puts right then and they you drop 50 cents you're going to gain sometimes 15 30 40 percent on that option contract within minutes and you have to get out on that intrinsic value so, I mean, when it's dropping, a lot of yep. people will be like, man, I was just up a hundred dollars and then now I waited two minutes and now I'm up 12. And I said, because it held some type of minor support at a lower entry level and there you lost that intrinsic value on the way down is what I, that's how I interpret intrinsic value is that people are like, wow, this thing might be worth 200 in two minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pay up money. I'm going to pay up. But then they go, hold on. No one's paying up that money. I'm no longer right. And it caught some support and now it's only worth. 12 bucks in profit, but you still make 12 bucks maybe, you know, in a three-hour yeah. contract. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great point too, is, is capturing uh, profit from options and not sticking in too long because options are all about promises and what people think is going to happen. Um, so getting out while the thing is still in motion is often a great way to get profit um, before it starts to lose its value. So, so when, when you're talking about buying options, are you always in the money with weeklies? Um, well, if I'm playing it for to get in and out on the short time frame, and I'm playing a weekly, like a Monday, it's a Monday, and I'm trading a Friday contract, then yes, I'm playing in the money at a support, strong support level that I see on a small time frame, and then all I need is just a little bit of it to confirm and move up a little, you know, just a tiny. I mean, even this move right here, it it all depends on the speed of the move. Now, you don't want to be eking here because you're just going to be getting time decay. So it's all about that. That you don't want to worry about your theta. And worry about time decay too, because you don't want to be getting hammered on one little, you know, you watch this move right here. Well, if it gets taken back down here to the red, then your contract you bought right here is going to be worth $30, $40 less. Usually, you just be in that short time frame on SPY anyway. And that won't happen on a lot of smaller companies, but on something like this, you're going to see even like Tesla, if you're trading Tesla with options, you can, you can get in on a hundred to two hundred dollars spread you're getting in on the bid and then two seconds later you just hit the ask and then it's just one little half a candlestick and move in one minute and you just you know made 50 to 100 dollars on a contract so it happens really fast and a lot of people don't know that when they start buying them because it's not like buying a common share and you make it oops and it's one to five percent it's an oops here can be 50 percent of a contract or a whole contract if you don't know what you're doing so okay so we're, now we're now we're starting to hit our own time decay on the show if you can yeah. leave so with one lesson that you've learned from the losses that you've had, the bruises that you got, the scars, um, what's one sort of uh, a line or adage um, that you would say to new options traders? 
find out what you're good at and harness what you're good at. And, and if you find something that's not working for you, understand why it didn't work and then test the strategy by changing it and not by going away from it and find out a way to make that strategy work because there, everyone has a, a different strategy and you just got to find your own and just, just believe in it until you figure out a way to make it work for you and stick with it. I love it. All right, man. Where can folks find more from you uh, in your group and continue learning with you? Um, our company is called Elite Trading. Uh, we're on. We have an Elite Trading Discord server, and then we also post. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube on Elite Trading about options. We have hours of live trainings like this, just talking with good people, and they can go to just look up Elite Trading on YouTube. And our uh, we we we've been working on our website. It's elitetradinglive.com. It's more desktop friendly than mobile. So if you have mobile listeners, that they won't like it. But elitetradinglive.com is just something that we're working on to get people to be able to see a little bit of information and find us. So I appreciate you guys having me on. I'll come on and talk with you anytime. I love this show. Yeah, I like it. And I like your trading style too. So I, there's still, I still want to pick your brain about it. So I'd love to have you on again, man. All right. Anytime. Let us know. Let Aaron reach out or tell Aaron to reach out. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks, man. You have a good one. All right, guys, Elite Trading Live link is in the chat. Um, uh, Just a reminder that website is still under construction a little bit. So you want to you know, give them some grace. It might not work on mobile, but you can find um, them elsewhere. Make sure you're dropping those links in there, producer AP. Um, we are at time for the show. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming on. I just want to remind everyone, guys, guys, where's my sh- screen share? Come on, screen share. Enzigabootcamp.com. Zero to hero do you want to be a zero or a hero we all know the answer make sure you get yourself to benzigabootcamp.com and register for the day of education this saturday for free be there i'll be there um and a whole bunch of fantastic educators that you can see here are going to be there as well so come on join the party it's gonna be fun on a saturday um at any rate this has been Get Technical. Shout out to producer AB. Shout out to Jason Raznick. Um, and shout out to our very, very special guest um, uh, who came out a little bit late, but I think we got a great lesson. Um, at any rate, happy trading and have a great day.